Well, hello, First Baptist Church of Windsor. My name is Justin Willis. I'm going to be helping out with the children's program. I'm the uh, family or the children's director here now. And I've been doing that for about a month. So I'm really new kind of at helping out with the children. But this last Sunday, which was just yesterday, we got to have the opportunity to uh, go out onto the field and even in the midst of COVID times, teach these children about God and about the resurrection and just the, the death and the resurrection of Jesus. And we're gonna be doing that every Sunday now, kind of from here on out. But for those of you guys at home that are maybe still a little afraid to be sending kids to children's church or um, it's just hard for it to be able to make it out, we want to be giving you guys a video of what we are learning here at church because these children, they need to have a lesson maybe geared directly towards them and I, I, that's why we're filming this video. So I wanted to start by giving the lesson that we actually gave just yesterday. So I started with, I had this bucket here and I had the kids guess uh, a coin. See, because a lot of coins, they have a specific shape and a feel to them. And sometimes you could just pick up a coin and you can know, oh, well, that's a penny, that's, that's, a, that's a nickel, that's a dime, that's a quarter, especially the quarters. Quarters are easy, they're rather large. So what I'm gonna do, just like I had the kids do yesterday, is I'm gonna close my eyes, reach into the bucket and grab a coin and see what I grab and just try to feel. So I'll show the camera, I think that's the camera. So I gotta feel the coin, I think this is a nickel. Yeah, it is, look at that. And you can guess the coin, you could do it again, I could grab another one, so that's another nickel actually. We got a quarter right here. There you go. Big old, big old quarter. And you can kind of guess these coins, but what's a lot harder to guess uh, sometimes is uh, the price that we have to pay for things, right? We know how much these coins cost. A penny, one cent. A quarter is 25 cents, and that's the price that it'll get you. But when we sin, what what is the payment that we have for that? And what is the price that somebody has to pay so that our sin can be removed? See, that's what we're going to be talking about today. And in our Bible story, we're going to be hearing that Jesus paid a high price for sinners and was a price that we could never pay for ourselves. But Jesus, he didn't use money. And uh, he actually used something very different. So what I'm going to start with is actually I want to introduce, introduce a character. And I've only got myself today. So I'm going to be playing a judge. I'm going to be playing a judge right now. Well, hello, everyone. I'm glad you are here. Sometimes being a judge is really difficult. It always feels good to help justice flow through our nation. But at times, the weight of the job can feel unbearable. When you hear about some awful things people do, it can feel like there is no hope. Thankfully, I know that no matter what the crimes are committed or how hard it might be to ensure that bad guys are always caught, there is hope. That hope doesn't come from a criminal justice system. It doesn't come from laws or from government. It doesn't come from lawyers, judges, or any people at all. No, it comes from God. Our hope comes from the work that Jesus did to save us. So that's kind of what a judge does. They pass that sentence. But our true judge, God, he actually talks about in the Bible about payment. Romans 6, 23 says, for the free gift of God is eternal life, right? The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life because we have all sinned and have all been sentenced to death, but we all have that free gift that we see in the Bible. And that free gift is God's son, Jesus. So that brings us to the big question of the day. What did Jesus do to save us? See, the big answer is that Jesus lived a sinless life died on the cross, and rose from the dead. We have hope because God's perfect plan to send his son, Jesus, succeeded. He lived a life without any sin, perfectly obeying all of God's laws. And then he died the death that we deserve as though he were a criminal who got judged guilty of sin. And then he rose again to prove his sacrifice was perfect and complete. And when we have faith in Jesus, God says we are righteous with Jesus's righteousness. See, Jesus, he, he paid for us, right? And because of that, he has given us eternal life. Hope comes from the truth of the gospel. So I'm going to ask you get kids, if you're, if you're home alone and reading along, if you could grab your Bibles and open it up to Matthew 26. That's where our story is going to be. And it just says this. It says, Jesus stood before Pilate, the governor, and Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered, yes, that's right. Then the religious leaders made accusations against Jesus, but Jesus did not say anything. Pilate was surprised that Jesus was silent. 
every year at Passover, the governor would free a prisoner, whichever prisoner the people chose. And at that time, there was a prisoner named Barabbas who was very dangerous. So Pilate asked the crowd, who do you want me to set free, Barabbas or Jesus? And I asked the kids this, uh, who do you think they picked? And some of the kids, they knew the answer. They knew the answer was Barabbas, but they thought, well, Jesus, obviously the crowd would pick Jesus. But that's not what the crowd did. The crowd picked Barabbas. And Pilate asked, then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? And the crowd answered, crucify him. Pilate asked, what, have he, what has he done wrong? But the crowd kept shouting, crucify him. Pilate's soldiers took Jesus to the governor's palace and gathered around him. They took off his clothes and put a scarlet robe on him. They made a crown of thorns and put it on his head. Then they hit Jesus and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. The soldiers nailed Jesus to a cross, and then they cast lots to decide who would get his clothes. They, they fought for his clothes. Then they put a sign above his head that said, This is Jesus, the King of the of the Jews, and the two criminals were then crucified next to him. They mocked him, they made fun of him by putting that sign up, they beat him, and then Jesus died. That doesn't sound like a, a very fun story, right? Jesus, at the end of his life, shouted, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then with a loud voice said, finally, it is finished. Then Jesus died. Jesus was buried in a rich man's tomb. It was cut into this rock, and then the, a stone was sealed in front of the tomb. And Roman soldiers st stood guards that no one could steal Jesus' body. And that's going to be the end of our story for today. We'll kind of finish that story next week with the resurrection, the more exciting and uh, uplifting of the two stories. But if we finish here, that story is actually very sad. See, before Jesus was crucified, the religious leaders accused him. And how did Jesus respond? If you had time to grab your Bibles, and we're already open to Matthew 26, uh, if you read 26, 20, or, uh, 62 verses 63, it shows that Jesus was silent. He was even silent as the soldiers placed a robe on him and a crown of thorns on his head to mock him. And this fulfills the prophecy that we found in Isaiah 53, 7. Jesus' silence shows his humility and his willingness to lay down his life for us. And when Jesus was on the cross, people made fun of him, saying, He saved others, but he cannot save himself. See, Jesus did all this because, as our bottom line says, Jesus died on the cross to pay for our sins. Jesus died on the cross to pay for our sins. And when Jesus shouted from the cross, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Why did he say this? Jesus freed us from sin and death by taking the curse upon himself. God is perfect and separates sin from us. So as Jesus hung on the cross, the weight of all that sin went upon him, and God turned away from the Son. When we trust in Jesus as our Lord and Savior, God will never turn away from us. So the application here, boys and girls, with this, this is a, this is a tough subject, but the application is this. Jesus' crucifixion, burial, and resurrection are the center of of the gospel. It's why we're here at church, even if you're sitting at home watching this video. Jesus accomplished the plan that God had been working throughout the Old Testament to bring salvation to sinners, and it happened in an unlikely way. As our bottom line says, I'm going to repeat it, Jesus died on the cross and paid for our sins. In the book of Acts, Peter testifies to the Israelites about Jesus' death. It says this, though he was delivered up according to God's determined plan and for and for knowledge, you used lawless people to nail him to a cross and kill him. That's Acts 20 or that's Acts 2, 23. Crucifixion was a horrific way to die. So why did Jesus die? Two primary reasons stand out. First, God is loving. And second, God is just. So God is loving. He sent his son to be the savior of the world because he loves us. Hopefully you at home can quote this verse, but what is John 3.16? It begins like this, For God so loved the world, he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, 
but will have everlasting life. See, Jesus submitted to the will of the Father. He humbled himself and came to earth as a man and laid down his life because he loves us. Jesus lived a perfect life that we failed to live and died the guilt, guilty death that we don't have to die. Those who trust in him receive forgiveness and eternal life. Second, God is just. Let me grab my hammer again. God is just. Just like a judge passes justice, passes a sentence, God's law for the people was a plan. Uh, but uh, God's people and all the, the, uh, the people of the world broke that law. And we have loved other things than more, more than we have loved God. That's what sin is. It's loving anything else more than God. So why did Jesus have to die? Why couldn't he just say, you are forgiven, just pass that law, you're forgiven? No, because God is just, and he requires due payment for sin. To simply forgive sin without requiring a payment would be unjust. Jesus was our substitute, taking our place on the cross and absorbing God's wrath on our behalf so we can be forgiven and declared righteous. Jesus died to rescue sinners from sin and slavery, and when we trust in him, we are free indeed. So I asked the kids at the beginning of the lesson, actually, a series of uh, questions for how they would punish. So they, they were, these were joke punishments like, all right, if, you, if we passed a law that said it was illegal to wear shoes to bed, what would the punishment be? And I think all the kids answered, well, obviously they can't wear shoes in the daytime. Or if we passed a law that said, you've eaten too many bananas, what should your punishment be? No bananas ever. In fact, no sugar. I think one kid was like, well, no candy. Obviously, if they eat too many bananas, they can't have candy or bananas. So then the, the final question was, what should the punishment be for somebody that lived a perfect and holy life? Well, just like the first two examples, wearing shoes to bed or eating too many bananas, there really shouldn't be a punishment, right? And for living a perfect and holy life, there definitely shouldn't be a punishment. Yet, Jesus took the punishment anyways. A punishment he did not deserve, but one that we did. We deserve to die because of our sin, but God loved us and kept his promise to send a savior for us. And Jesus never sinned, but he did die in our place. He was the blood sacrifice made once and for all that forgave sin. And as we'll find out next week, Jesus rose from the dead on the third day. And those that trust in him have forgiveness and eternal life. So I wanted to pray and end there. That was, that was kind of a brief what we talked about this Sunday. I would love it if you guys could join us. For those of you guys that may have missed it, or if not, I'm hopefully going to be doing these videos every week to kind of talk about what we've been going through. So we'll be talking about the resurrection next week, but let's pray. So... Dear God, I just uh, pray uh, for all of these kids, for children's ministry, God, uh, that these kids will be able to recognize the heart of the gospel. And as uh, sombering and maybe hard it is to hear this story today, God, it's for a greater purpose because you died on the cross, but then you rose again and conquered death. You died a sinless life because we sinned, but you did it so that you could, we could have our sin removed, God. And I pray that all these kids will come to recognize and put their faith and trust in this act that you did, God, in you, God, and in your son. And I pray all these things in your name. Amen.